Hey everyone, so today we're going to learn about our inspirational artists for this unit, which is called Portraiture and Identity. We briefly learned about these artists last week during our live session, but let's um, learn more about them, some unique things about their art style, and we'll be drawing inspiration from them for some different self-portrait ideas that you are more than welcome to do. So, little reminder, our essential question is, how can artists incorporate their identity into their artwork? Little reminder, identity is everything that makes you who you are. It's your um, physical appearance, it's your culture, your beliefs, um, your gender, interests, hobbies. It can be as deep as you want, and it can be as um, shallow, but not in the bad way, just surface level information about you. You're going to choose what you want to share in your self-portrait. It can um, be as meaningful or as fun or as um, personal as you want to make it. That part is completely up to you. Portraiture. So portraiture is the art of creating portraits, and a portrait is an artwork that includes some form of representation of a person. It usually focuses on the person's face and expression, um, again, representation of a person. You don't have to draw realistically if you are not ready for that challenge yet, if you don't want it. Um, you can take inspiration from any existing art style that you like and make it your own or keep it really simple. Um, and think about like smiley faces and emojis. We recognize those as faces, as people, despite it just being a circle and two dots for an eyes, right? So look at a lot of different examples um, and create a portrait that you are happy and comfortable with that represents who you are. Our first artist inspiration, artist example is Frida Kahlo, who is very well known for creating self-portraits. She was born in Mexico City in 1907. She lived a complex life. She suffered from polio as a child and had to be confined to her bed for nine months when she was just six years old. When she was a bit older, at 18, she was in an accident where she broke her spinal column. She overcame these tragedies and used these experiences um, as symbols to share her stories through her artwork. It was during her recovery period, Kahlo actually discovered her love of painting and became friends with well-known Mexican artists who eventually introduced her to Diego Rivera. The two would later marry, and their relationship also fueled her storytelling in her artwork. So if you want to take a deep dive into her experiences and history, you can see all of these tragic and big events being represented in her artwork. Um, she's gone, she lived through a lot of physical pain, and she shows that in her self-portraits um, in abstract ways and really obvious ways. Some of them it might be hard to look at depending on what you're sensitive to. There can be some blood, um, some sharp things. So just be mindful of that. Um, but these are some examples. She really identified with um, this monkey that you see in the two cell portraits. And she documented who she was at different stages of her life. Um, but what these all have in common is that it focuses on her face and shoulder up, adding little details to change the narrative a little bit. Our second artist is Kendu Wiley. He was born in Los Angeles, California, and he fell in love with art at a young age. He earned a Bachelor's of Fine Arts from the San Francisco Art Institute and his Master's of Fine Arts from the Yale University School of Art. Studying fine arts for years, Wiley studied the classics which consisted of extravagant, realistic paintings of white men. Combining his skill set with who he is and his experiences, Wiley began to create a body of work consisting of photorealistic paintings of men set against floral backgrounds, combining references from classical paintings and pop culture. His work spotlights um, Black men and women, giving them a space in this classical painting style. So... Photorealistic means um, super, super realistic. Like it could be a photograph. If you look at all these examples, they 
the lighting, the contrast, it, it looks like it's a photograph, so realistic, but these are all oil paintings. Um, and he specifically focuses on incorporating black men and women into his work because they weren't represented in those classical paintings. Um, he also identifies as a gay man, so including pop culture um, references in his work and combining that like um, hip hop culture with very floral backgrounds is his way of addressing masculinity within his community. Our third artist example, Amy Sherald. Amy Sherald was born in Columbus, Georgia, and is an American painter whose body of work consists of mostly portraits of African American and Black people in everyday settings. She combines different art styles in her paintings using techniques to create simplified, realistic interpretations of people and using gray tones to port to portray um, skin tones to challenge people's ideas about skin color and race. Sherald was selected to paint a portrait of Michelle Obama, becoming one of the first African Americans to paint a presidential portrait alongside Kende Wiley. So Amy Sherald has a really um, different and fun way of portraying people. Instead of making it a self-portrait like Frida Kahlo or um, super photo realistic like Kende Wiley, she kind of balances a stylized and realistic art style within her portraits. These all clearly look realistic still, but not as realistic as what we saw with Kahinda Wiley. And she purposefully um, keeps all the skin tones in shades of black and white and gray tones to have um, the people's identities, their story represented in their clothing and the colors rather than um, their skin color. And this is a direction you can take for your self-portrait if you'd rather draw more of a simplified um, person, the person who's going to represent you, but give more focus to your clothes in the background instead. That is completely um, a valid option to tackle this project. This meeting, um, I just grabbed her biography from a website she uses. I also couldn't really find a photo of her. So this is just an example of her digital work. So she is a Vietnamese American illustrator. She works with rounded shapes and vibrant colors to tell a story, specifically stories of the marginalized communities she's in and around. Inclusion and representation is an ongoing theme throughout her work because she is passionate about representing the experiences of women, specifically women of color and other visible minorities. So I'm including her work because she is again creating um, a much more stylized, which means less realistic um, version of people. So this is more on the, for lack of a better word, cartoonish side. Um, again, we still see features that look more realistic than some styles, like the way she shades the nose um, and just adds texture. It still feels very realistic, um, but also it's flattened. You don't have like all of the details that make up a realistic portrait. Um, and this is here to show you that you, again, can still represent who you are in a simpler way. And it's still correct. It's still good art. It's beautiful art. Um, and there are just so many ways you can tackle representing who you are in a portrait. And of course, for those of you who like really like to play with colors and shapes and keep it very whimsical and fun, um, you can always do an abstract self-portrait. This will also be another direction you can take. Um, this is Sylvia Platt's example and she used an array of colors, some textures in different parts. Kind of makes it look like she's wearing a headband instead of just like solid color for all of her hair. She mixes both geometric, those sharp edge shapes and organic shapes. Um, and we can still read the face as a face. Um, and Pablo Picasso, he combines a lot of different colors and movements um, and just lots of different paint strokes in this to create a portrait that still reads as a person. Um, there are a lot of different ways you can tackle an abstract self-portrait. And I'll go over some ideas 
um, either later this week or next week. We have a lot of different options and inspiration for creating a self-portrait that you are happy and comfortable with. Um, it'll be very, very open. So if you have more ideas from what I provide, please feel free to try those out. And always email me if you have any questions.